How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video here on our channel. I'm the FIFA analyst, and today we are bringing you a tier list on my best defenders on FIFA 22 so far. We're taking a look at fullbacks and centre backs today, and we've got a long, a lot of cards to go ahead and get through. If there is a card that doesn't appear on here, a player, it's more than likely because I've not had a chance to use them enough or not use them at all to kind of give you a proper understanding of how that card works. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel would be greatly appreciated. Now, we've broke this up into three tiers and we're going to be looking at the low tier, mid tier and the, uh, the top tier, basically. Now, the reason why I broke them up like that way is I think that gives it a bit more of an understanding of what's easier to kind of say the I class as quality, good, and then the low... I, I've used a lot of these cards and, and you know, Delit, for example, I used this 86 for quite a long time. 86, sorry, no, the 89 I used quite a long time. Um, and he works and he's okay, but I wouldn't advise you to go out your way and get him. That's kind of what I mean in the low tiers. They're, they're, they're viable, they can work, but there's certainly better options. So Delit would be the first one out there for you. Medium high is the UCL road to the knockouts. It was an SBC, if I remember correctly. And overall, he's a solid centre-back. His positioning is good. I like him. It's just the pace and the, the agility at times for me that Delit can be a little bit hard because he's six foot two. Medium high work rates, which are good. He has got decent weak foot at three star. But really, it's the league that he's in, the nation, and the fact that he just isn't out of this world, really. But he was okay to use for a brief period of time. Moving over to the full back position we're actually going to be taking a look at if i can find him by here trent alexander arnold now he's obviously got a few special cards this year i use this rule breaker card for a long time on our road to glory if you have been watching that and I like him going forward. I think he's a good fullback. But the reason why I'm just like, no, this isn't someone I'd ever recommend is that he just isn't great defensively. He gets caught out of positioning quite a lot of the times. His defensive awareness is only 83. Overall, it's just a little bit weak for fullback. Like, he doesn't suit the fullback position. He probably suits like a wing back in like a five at the back or a three, five, two in the right mid position. He's got a great cross on him, but you know, you see that strength at 70, you see the lack of defending stats and he does just get bullied a little bit if you were to play him at fullback. So I would personally, you know, want to avoid that if I was you. So he is in the low tier. Now, this one you're probably not going to agree with me on. I don't think this card is as good as what his cards have been over previous years. And it is going to be Gerard Piquet. He received a showdown. Uh, and it was against Saul in the Champions League, I think it was, actually. Um, and, he, yeah, he, again, it's a similar sort of one. Nation and League so-so which comes into account here but mainly for me he just isn't really there in what I want from a center back I've used him and I had a bit of success with him I liked him but the high attacking work rates the medium defensive actually gets him caught a little bit out of position and because he's not the most nimble he's six foot four even though his agility and balance is good he can turn and recover he just isn't always going to be in that right sort of position at that right time and right speed so he can get bullied a little bit at this stage of the game now now, next up is going to be, uh, you can play this card centre-back or full-back. I've been using him at full-back recently, uh, Tanganga, the SBC. I have the right-back version myself in my current team, actually. I really don't like the card. Overall, he looks okay for a full-back. You look at the stats and you think, yeah, yeah, you know, this is good. He'll, he'll be in the right place, you know, good body type. Just overall solid enough for the fullback options in the Premier League. I don't really know what it is about him, but I find him weak in a tackle. I find him weak out on the wing in the strength department, even though he has 88 strength. I don't find he can switch a ball well. I think his passing seems really poor. He can't switch that ball long, even though his vision's 80, long pass at 82. And he's not really good going forward. He doesn't feel good on the ball either. In the jockey, in the one-on-one -on -one department, he is okay. He is only five foot eleven, so a little bit lower center of gravity in that kind of agility and that department. But certainly one for me that I wouldn't advise you having in your team if you can avoid it. Again, maybe a little bit different. Now, I'm going to put this one in the low tier, and I actually have a soft spot for Reese James because I use his inform, he's 84, for quite a long time. But he does have the uh, headliner cards, which is this one here. Five foot ten, high medium. Three star, three star. Now, overall, this is a solid card, a good, good fullback in the sense of defending with the pace that he's got. 
you know, he's there. But when you really look at the pure defensive stats, 82 interceptions, 84 defensive awareness, similar to a lot of fullbacks, sometimes we'll just get caught. I actually prefer this card playing at centre-back. Although he has the high medium work rates, he has the pace to make up for it. If you wanted to play him at centre-back, you get a lot more kind of out of him in terms of the fact that he can pass the ball, the fact that he's good on the turn and that he's strong as well at that 89 strength and does actually feel stronger than in Dombele, in my opinion. And then last up in the in the poor department and in the, in the low department is going to be Luke Shaw's Team of the Year honourable mentions. This card came out as an objective and like, all right, he's not bad, but he's certainly not someone that you would really go, yeah, I want to get him into my team at this stage of the game. Now, when he came out, he was okay. He was viable for a little bit. But for most people, you probably just want to stay away from this um, if you've got the ability to you know, kind of have him in your team now because there's better options in a player, which obviously you'll see very shortly. Can he do a job? Absolutely. But for me, not one that I would want to have in my team. Right then, moving over to our middle tier. Now, this is defenders, which I think you can use. I, I, I do like them. I think they are, you know, kind of out there. If you're a little bit maybe on a tighter budget, you know, the, these are the sort of cards that you could be looking at. But there are obviously better ones out there. Now, Virgil van Dijk, the gold card, you don't actually see too much anymore. Uh, he wasn't really used that much at the start of the game either. You do have the headliners on Virgil van Dijk. Six up four, medium, medium. I think he is probably one of the best defenders at getting AI blocks in. But you look at that acceleration, the agility as well. You can get turned with him easily. This sort of card suits people that maybe sit deep, rely on AI defending quite a bit. But for a lot of people, you will get punished using him in that quick turn, the through ball area. That's kind of how you exploit Van Dyke. But have him on the six yard box, getting blocks in, and you are going to be absolutely sorted. Now, I'm putting this card in here in the mid tier. And the only reason why I'm putting him in the mid tier is that I find him weak on the ball at times. He does have 93 strength. He has a lean body type, which is what makes me feel that he's not the strongest. The reason why he's here, though, is because of the price tag on this card. At the time when he came out, he was through the roof and he still holds a very high price tag right now. And I just don't think he's worth those coins to go out for normal people well you know maybe, maybe pro players run this card every now and then, but like for, for your average sort of user i don't really think he's worth putting in that center back position because i just think it's a little bit of waste of coins i think your coins can be spent better elsewhere two star weak foot better agility better balance really good short passing good defensive awareness overall a very very solid card paces through the roof defensive stats are good and as I said, the, the, the 93 strength to me, because of the body type, does feel a little bit low. Do take into account he has 83 aggression as well, which that'll take, you know, a lot of play in those kind of little battles that he will have. But overall, a solid centre-back. It's just the price tag that really makes me put him off. Now, to join him in the French department, we are going to take a look at Konote, who does have a... Uh, which one was it? Sorry, a Future Stars card. Uh, obviously, for Liverpool, we've been getting some more game time recently. Medium high, six foot four, good pace, defensive stats, incredible at 91. The big thing here is the 96 stand tackle combined with 93 strength allows him to be really, really tough when he is up against players. Stamina, 80, good aggression, 87. Maybe you could like get a little bit higher at times, but overall, a very, very good card in that department. I think, again, a similar one is that he's still hold holding a fairly well price. Maybe you'd want that a little bit more pace but that's probably us being picky but overall a very very good card just not top top tier for me and the only reason for that is that i always think when you have like cards that develop over time that are so good in the ai department ai intelligence blocking and kanote for me because his base card isn't like incredible i always feel like any like extra cards they get sometimes have that little bit of a hint to him while his van dyke's 90 just knows to position himself better and block better than kanote who's had the upgraded stats one of them, my crazy hypothesis. So next up is going to be Skriniar, who actually, when this card came out, was very, very good. Really good weak foot. Again, pace is what it is. Defensively, unbelievable. For the player, when he came out in that signature signings back in December, was unbelievable. If you ran a Serie A team, this was kind of like a, a must get. The only obviously negative, I would say, really, when we take a look at this card, is that it's so difficult to get him into your team because of the nation. Maybe you could argue Syria. Not even though they've had loads of SBCs, they've had a lot of cards this year. Not the most popular. I've been using it a lot myself, and I really, really do like him. This stage of the game now, though, falling behind a little bit behind the power curve with that pace is uh, as what it is essentially. 
So we're going to stick in the um, Syria and we are going to take a look at Darmian, if I spell his name right. And Darmian had an SBC, if I remember correctly. I think it was a sh uh, showdown. Yes, it was indeed. And this is a very well-rounded fullback again which is quick, good defensive, good physical. The passing is good for a fullback. Vision a little bit low, though, but the crossing does make up for that at 87. For a medium-high defender, if you are after that, like, to see out a game, which is what a lot of people use this Darmian to come on off the bench. He comes on, he sees out the game. You can put him in centre defensive mid, at centre back, at fullback, wherever you kind of suit, and he does a great job in that sense. If you still got him in line around in your club, don't be afraid to use that card. He still does a fantastic, fantastic job. Now, this card, when it came out at the time of the SBC releasing, I said he was a really, really good fullback and I liked him. One of the better fullbacks on the game. The only real big downside to this is that linking him at that time was proving to be very difficult because he didn't really have the greatest of links. I think then, by then, you had the PK link, if I remember correctly. Or had it already come out by then? I can't remember. But either way, like now you've got sort of some different options and different players that you can link them into. Pedri kind of being a big one. Ferran Torres, if you want to just go for the soft link, Griezmann can link in as well. So there's a few ways to get him into your team more now. But overall, the card is very well rounded. And if you've still got him lying around in your club, don't be afraid to use him. He's one of the better fullbacks on the game. I've had a bit more game time with him. And he, he was a, I mean, he wasn't really expensive. I think it's about 140k when he came out. My only thing was that he just, he, he was so hard to link. Now you have a couple more options he is certainly more of a viable fullback for you to get in to your team now this one Kunde, we are going to talk about him because i think he's i think he's worth a mention the honorable mentions see what i did there the team of the year honorable mentions he is quick he's good defensively he's good on the ball as well i really like his dribbling stats the work rates were let down the biggest thing with this card is the height right Five foot eleven with eighty three strength. If you come up against a Ronaldo, you're gonna get bullied. You know at that kind of back stick. That that's something that you can do against Kunde. You can exploit that. Either way though, a viable card if you need the links and whatnot into Dest or Mendy or or Griezmann, whoever it may be. He's a, he's an okay one. Obviously lacks though in some areas and will never ever be top tier. Again, going back over to Syria, we're going to talk about Spino Spinoza. Spinozola, I can't get my words out, shall I? Who has that winter wild cards, five star skill moves, which people forget. High, high, brilliant in the middle of the park as a center defensive mid, good, good pace. Defensive stats are, are okay. Does lack a little bit in some areas, a 73 strength, 78 aggression. As I said, you know, the defensive stats are, are all right for what they are, but they're not incredible for a fullback. But you kind of get that with a lot of fullbacks. And again, a really nice one. And you do surprise people with those work rates, with those weak foot. Suits better in a five at the back or a three at the back in that like, kind of wide mid position if you can get him in. We're going to go back over to the Premier League now and talk about Kyle Walker, who has that team of the year honorable mentions, the 87. I actually think this card is better at centre-back than he is full-back uh, because he's just so hard to get past. High, high work rate, six foot. The weak foot is a letdown here, though, but brilliant pace. Defensive stats, again, are what they are. Good stamina. Strength a little bit low, but his body type kind of makes up for it. He can really bully attackers when they do get side-by-side -side with him. Mainly his pace making up for that big chunk of that. Uh, passing is good, 83 short passing, 81 long passing, division at 78, crossing at 80, a little bit low in some of those areas, but that's why I think as a centre-back, he would suit better if you can get him in. Now, this is a card which, I'll be honest, I don't see that much. I've been playing with him a lot in 2v2, and that is the Future Stars and Dicker. He is phenomenal, by the way. Like He just performs so much better than what maybe his, his card kind of says, really. Medium height, 6 foot 4. Three-star weak foot, good pace, both at the 85. His defensive stats are very solid with 89 stand tackle, 87 defensive awareness, brilliant strength, good enough stamina as well. And the agility and balance in that one-on-one -on -one jockeying scenario, and Dicker certainly performs very well. Unbelievable short passing and long passing for a centre-back. If you want to switch the ball with this card, he can do that very easily. Honestly, if you haven't used him, one of my like recommendations for you to go and get him in. Now, we're going to talk about Eric Bailey here because I've been using this card myself for my RTG. 
People have been asking me, you know, is he worth getting into a team? Should I go my way to change my team around? Not really. But if you've got like a David De Gea or you've got a Tellez link or whoever it may be, Eric Bailey or next to Varane, they can work really, really well together. So I do rate him in that area. Sometimes a little bit weak because he's almost got a lean body type. He has 92 strength, which, you know, kind of counteracts that. Overall, though, a solid centre back. I like him in the 1v1. I don't think he's the quickest off the mark. You do get caught sometimes in that kind of battle. But certainly a good centre back. And with that upgrade, makes him a lot more fun to use. To partner that, as I just mentioned, the man, Alex Tellez. He has got that road to the final um, card, which I've been using again in 2v2 recently. And I really rate him. I really like him. He's really good on the ball. His crossing's great. His passing's really solid. And stamina up and down the high attacking work rates, the medium defensive. Defensive position, again, sometimes you want to be a little bit careful of. Only 83 defensive awareness. So do keep that into account. You'll notice a theme here that the fullbacks tend to have low defensive awareness. But a great fullback nonetheless. Uh, one of the better options in the Premier League, actually in my opinion now mendy is gonna is gonna feature i'm i've used this card a little bit like i prefer theo hernandez actually if i'm honest with you i'm using him at the minute in my rtg he's not really that good anymore like i think there are certainly much better options but i'm kind of putting him in because he's always a safe option like if you need to just get a french fallback in mendy can do the other one obviously is that theo hernandez which we will talk about in the top tier shortly sticking with Siri, uh, La Liga, sorry. You can look at Ren and Lodi. This is a card which, um, shout out to my man Felix, who always loves Ren and Lodi. Ren and Lodi is great if you love going forward and attacking. Reason being, he's unbelievable on the ball. Brilliant agility, brilliant balance, good enough dribbling as well. His attacking position is okay for a fullback. He's got really good crossing and decent enough passing. A little bit low in the strength department. Lean body type again. Gets bullied a little bit, you know, for some people, but certainly capable of going forward with 82 shot power, 84 composure. Hit it across goal. He's got a chance to score if he does ever get into that position. And then last but not least in this department, I'm only putting him in here because of the links, okay? If he wasn't from uh, Cameroon and maybe was a little bit more of a, of a nation which is used on FIFA, let's say, without taking... um Sorry, not Cameroon, Senegal, my bad. Um, I did I have to, I have to second guess myself then. Without taking away from Senegal, you know, if he was it more of like a... If he was French... Uh, German, English, Portuguese, I don't know, something that's easier to link him in. He would be in the top tier because his card is incredible, but he's just hard to link into your team unless you've got that kind of full Serie A squad or players from Napoli. Not taken away from Koulibaly because I really do like him, but that is the biggest kind of weakness to this card. Agility does get caught at times. Balance can be a little bit of a letdown, but he's got pure strength at 99. Brilliant sprint speed. His defending stats are through the roof with 96 defensive awareness. His positioning is great and incredible at that. So that's my mid tier. And then last but not least, to finish up my top defenders on FIFA 22 so far. I'm going to start off with Ruben Diaz. These are in no particular order, by the way. Ruben Diaz, team of the year card. People don't put enough respect on this. I think Varane seems to be the go-to one over. But this Ruben Diaz is so, so good. Brilliant pace. Defensive stats through the roof. 99 defensive awareness, 99 stand tackle, 94 slide tackle, 99 aggression, 96 strength. You put a shadow on this card. He goes up onto that middle middle 90s on a pace. You really can't ask for much more. One of the best centre-backs on the game, in my opinion. If not the best, actually. Big shout there. Marquinhos. Marquinhos has a few cards now. Yeah, it depends on which one you want to go for. The gold one a little bit behind the power curve now. I'm always just going to pick the best ones here for you guys. But Marquinhos, similar to what we just saw there with Diaz. Incredible defensive stats. Incredible physicals. Really good on the ball as well. You know, these team of the year cards obviously are just through the roof. I don't really need to explain too much on why they make it. But they certainly do. Now, next up, we're going to talk about probably the best card on FIFA 22, in my opinion, right now, because of the versatility of it. And that is Jao Cancelo's Team of the Year card, the left back. You can play him in centre mid, you can play him on the wing, you can play him at Cam, even if you wanted to. You can play him at centre back, full back, wherever. If you can get this going to your team, please do. I actually do think he's better in the middle of the park as a centre mid because his defensive stats are so good, but he's so good on the ball. He can offer you everything that you would ever really want. However, I understand some people find that difficult to do to change them around. So maybe just stick with him at left back. But the best Premier League, left back and the best fullback on the game without a shadow of a doubt. 
Switching over to the other side of the wing, Hakimi obviously is going to be mentioned here, the team of the year. Very similar in that he can play in centre defensive mid. At centre back, this card is broken with 99 pace. It's so difficult to get past, but again, a, a great card for you to use. Maybe not as good as Cancelo. Uh, I think Cancelo is a little bit more well-rounded, but in terms of that pure pace, pure defensive kind of area, he will certainly do a job for you. And if you've got him in your team, people are going to be very frustrated trying to get past him. Now, I've seen people throwing a lot of a lot of shade on this man recently, saying he's not all that good. I personally think he's incredible. I don't think he's as good as Diaz. I do think Diaz wins that battle, actually, if I'm honest with you. But if you did this SBC, you are definitely in the right place with him because he's just so good defensively. Similar to Van Dijk, he blocks so well. He makes it really difficult for people to get past him. He's strong. He's got pace. The balance is probably the biggest letdown. He's got good short passing and good long passing for a centre-back. As I said, you, you really can't ask so much more from him. If you want a cheaper option in the Premier League, you can go for Rudiger. He does have his team of the year honourable mentions, the 90 card. His team of the week is actually not that bad either as well, so don't disregard that one. But this card, oh my word, I've never seen someone just cover the ground so quick and be there. You took a shadow on him. He is so frustrating to play against. I actually think I hate playing against Rudiger more than Diaz and Varane put together because he just seems to be everywhere. His reactions are good, the aggression, the strength, the awareness. Fantastic, fantastic centre-back. And let me know who you think he's going to sign for because he, he just rumoured to be leaving Chelsea at the end of this season. It wouldn't be a best defenders list without looking at Kimpembe. I'm still using the gold Kimpembe. He still works. We now have a road to the final Kimpembe, which is by far very broken. I'd say the biggest weakness with Kimpembe at times is that sometimes he can just be not weak, but again it almost feels like his body type lets him down a little bit but maybe that's what makes him so good as well i don't know <laughs> a fantastic card i don't think he's better than the marquinhos or the diaz or the Varane or the rudiger but he is broken and that gold card still does a job for us and then last but not least we are going to talk about hernandez um I've used his gold card. I haven't had the luxury to use his informs as of yet, but I know obviously that he, he is going to be great and that he is certainly going to work for you. I prefer him over Mendy. I think he is a phenomenal left back. I think obviously he's very different to someone like Cancelo, but in terms of my, my control is definitely broken, by the way. I've been saying this for the last few days. It's just like finding its way through this sort of stuff. Either way. Unbelievable card, really good defensively, hard to get past. Although his defensive stats aren't incredible, I've always found him to just outperform what he is there with the chemistry style and a card that I do really like if you are over in that Syria side of things. And that rounds up my top defenders on FIFA 22. As I said, if there is one there that you know you I haven't spoke about, it's more than likely because I've not had the luxury to use them. Uh, or something on the lines of that. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Who would you change? Who do you think should make the list? Would you change anyone into the top tier, mid tier, low tier? Let me know. Get involved. Thank you all very much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.